Hello, welcome to Axonautics for Exploit. I am Dr. Ayanshala Ogundele and I will be presenting the new space economy. The overview of my presentation is as follows. Benefits of space exploration, the new space ecosystem, growth of global space economy, and future of space economy. In the 21st century, evolution of space activities is steered by many new trends. The most feasible trends in space are the development of the commercial space, startups, and space ventures. The development pace is astronomical. Recent developments in space tourism, increasing access to space, and growing use of small satellites are source of attractions for new entrepreneurs, startups, and big actors with high investment capacity. This revolution started in the Silicon Valley and spread worldwide. It was reported that startups have attracted around $21.8 billion of investment from 2000 to 2018. What was once dominated by few players is today an incredibly diverse ecosystem in terms of company sizes business models and geographic locations. The new startups demonstrate resilience, adaptation capacity, and complex evolutions in the space ecosystem, which is typical of agile principles. The agility mindset, ability to manage risks and cooperate, and a big vision for the future are the new space startups order of the day and the means of disrupting the established industry. Benefits of space exploration. The following are the benefits of space to the humanity. Improvement on health care system. Improvement on our day-to-day -day lives. Increase in interest in science. Protection of art and its environment. Enhancement of safety on earth. Cooperation with countries around the world creation of scientific and technical jobs, and scientific discourse frees. Improvement on health care system. Experiments performed in space help us understand health problems on Earth. Improvement on our day-to-day -day lives. Space technologies improve products we use every day, weather forecasts, and communications worldwide. NASA helped turn the station's ultrasound machine into an all-purpose diagnostic imager with a direct line to doctors on Earth. The technology could help diagnose sick people in isolated communities around the world. The picture in the middle shows astronaut Leroy Chell performs an ultrasound examination of the eye on cosmonaut Salizan Sharapov aboard the International Space Station. Increase in interest in space science. Space exploration activities encourage young people to study science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Protection of art and its environment is another benefit of space to the humanity. Satellites provide data on climate change, measure pollution, and air protect our planet Earth. This image shows satellite image of Hurricane Andrew. Enhancement of safety on Earth is another benefit. Satellite data can be used to predict natural disasters and to support emergency relief efforts. Cooperation with countries around the world is another benefit. Partnership with interested countries helps to advance research using the International Space Station a research laboratory in space. This picture shows a NASA satellite image, Hurricane Sandy battering the Caribbean. Creation of scientific and technical jobs. Both government and private space agencies and companies provide high-tech jobs for the people. And also, another benefit is scientific discoveries. Due to the exploration of space, a lot of scientific discoveries have been made. 
The picture here shows Parker Solar Probe, the ISP probe. We discovered never before seen activity at the edges of the sun's atmosphere. The new space ecosystem. The new space. People, businesses, and organizations working to open the space frontier to human settlement through economic development is referred to as the new space. And this is given by the Space Frontier Foundation. The new space also refers to a new generation of space development, notably commercial. The new space is a global trend, affecting all players involved in the new space race. The picture here shows mass development concept for exploring, developing, and settling the red planet. The new space from agile mindset and perspective. So the Agile Mindset states that the emergence of a different ethos for space where the established aerospace methods and business have been challenged by more entrepreneurial private sector by adopting more agile approaches and exploiting the latest commercial of the safe technologies. The conceptual lunar railway system, which is called float, flexible levitation on a track, is given in this picture. Other names that are being used are as follows. Earth space, a new mindset and an alternative way of doing things in space, funded by private investors' opportunities and challenges. Entrepreneurial space and commercial space. The picture here shows NASA's new low-earth orbit commercialization strategy, including offering a docking port on the International Space Station for commercial models. New space disruptive innovations. Disruptive innovation creates a new market and value network and eventually disrupts the existing one, displacing or even destroying established market leaders. The picture here shows settling of off earth concept. Disruptive innovations are often initiated by outsiders and entrepreneurs rather than by existing market leading companies. A disruptive process can be longer to develop and it is more risky. But once developed, even with less performance at the beginning, a disruptive process can have a very fast and strong impact on the established markets and players. The picture here shows Syria Nevada Corporation development plans for slow earth orbit space station. Leveraging is transportation and destination technologies in support of new commercialization. With the growing number of startups and space entrepreneurs, there is increase in the disruption of the old traditional way of working, thereby enabling the startups to reinvent and adapt their own models. The rendering of the Space Solar Power Alpha concept, which was developed by John Markins, is shown in this picture. Attributes of new space. The main differentiators between old and new space are technology, business model, and company style. Traditional versus agile. Old space models follow a more traditional way of working. Why new space models favor agile practices? The picture here shows Jessa's SBSP, Space Based Solar Power Prototype. It is a satellite designed to run in stationary orbit 22,400 miles above the equator, which it will absorb sunlight with chromium enhanced solar cells. Neodymium plates fixed on the satellite surface will zap the energy down to earth by using laser beams with 42% solar to laser energy efficiency. Current estimations predict that a single solar SBSP satellite in space will be able to generate enough energy to power about 500,000 ohms. Focus of the new space Services Pricing models, use of commercial off-the-shelf products, 
new approaches of reliability, incremental deployment, that is work before run, revised methods inspired by DevOps culture, co-design with customer and suppliers, flat and agile organizations. The picture here shows the European Safe Tower SPS, a light tower-like orbital system. By design, the satellite stays in orbit and generates electricity that is transmitted back to Earth via microwaves. Space Ecosystem Model Generally, new space is considered as a standalone trend or as a revolution or disruption likely to replace past practices. The model shows the network of stakeholders involved in space activities and a list of new trends, evolution or disturbances that can impact the ecosystem. The picture here shows a 1990 artist rendering of Space Station Freedom, a project that eventually evolved into the International Space Station. The picture here shows the new space ecosystem. The input to the space ecosystem are new nations, business models, actors, money, ways of working, policies, technologies, threats, value chains, needs, and markets. This represents the financial sources and regulatory activities. We have the credit insurance and bank, venture capital who provides the financial sources, the regulatory bodies that regulate the activities, the national policies which actually create the policy for the ecosystem, the space and defense agencies. The most significant change is the growing role of private investors and venture capital in the space industry. New investors in space have various provides and the investment objectives are very different if made by business angels, venture capitalists, major industrial groups, that is corporate ventures, young internet billionaires or space enthusiasts. Business angels are more inclined to support the space activity of a startup on the mail to long term, why venture capitalists seek rapid financial results, e.g. exit opportunities. Led by Masayoshi Zon, the giant Japanese conglomerate SoftBank and its fusion fund, the world's largest technology fund, it's a very specific case. It's invested about $1.5 billion in OneWeb, becoming largest shareholder. The credit insurance is also very important in export contracts. So all these go into satellite manufacturers. Also launch industry and services. They need the regulatory bodies, national policies, space and defense agencies for the activities, venture capital, credits, insurance, and bank. So in the ecosystem, we have commercial and institutional service operators, markets, and customers. How this kept it together makes the major players, stakeholders, and startups to be the markets and customers, satellite manufacturers, launch industry and services, commercial and institutional service operators. Space activities are usually related to public sector customers or governmental activities with rather long-term projects. The main assumption of new space is that there is an untapped potential in commercial space activities. The democratization of space implies that commercial interests play a leading role, or at least that resources of governments and commercial enterprises shall be combined for better efficiency. Main drivers of the new appetite for space activities are the new needs, which are global connectivity and digital transformation of the society. How the markets, including ISRU, in situ resource utilization, are fully new with longer term return on investment and large uncertainties 
on market size and accessibility. The satellite manufacturers in the telecommunication sector, an important trend is the emergence of several massive constellation projects in low Earth orbit, providing global internet connectivity worldwide. And the satellite manufacturers play a lot of roles in achieving this. So some of these companies are OneWeb, Starlink, and Leosat. A second trend is the development of services based on small jurisdictionary at orbit platforms, not only for commercial customers, but also for various military applications. In art observation, the new space trend, also based on low art orbit constellations, is to provide higher revisit or even permanent video from space. This is the main differentiator with respect to the providers of very high resolution imagery. A second move is the development of image analytics services addressing new markets, for example, finance and insurance. The launches and satellite industry. The main novelty is the increasing number of new private actors trying to disrupt the current supply chain with new approaches. Smaller satellites, new orbits, and use of commercial off-the-shelf products. They propose also new business models or commercial approaches, including more vertically integrated supply chains and integration of the service over. More and more startups, backed by private ventures, develop very small satellites or constellations of small satellites for operational missions. The big players of the web sphere, Gavin and Bart, are increasingly interested by space and able to invest massively, either directly or through new companies. Regarding the launchers, the new space trend is making access to space more affordable. Elon Musk with SpaceX and the success of his Falcon 9 with reusable first stage is undoubtedly the main iconic symbol of entrepreneurial space. So also we have the non-space solutions which are also part of the markets and customers. Space ecosystem models. Some of the new trends in space that are having impacts on the space ecosystems are new investors, new startups, new policies, new threats, new needs, new technologies, and new value chains. The picture here shows an artist illustration of the inside lander on Mars. NASA's inside lander has been on Mars since November 2018. Its built-in seismometer detected the first Mars quakes. The main components of the new space are the market and the customers, the space industry, including the primes and the supply chain, with both established companies and startups, the service operators, the financing sources, the nations, space and defense agencies, and the international bodies. The diagram here shows the capitalized space ecosystem. This is a project that was conceived to solve current needs for space exploration, focusing on avoiding dependency on Earth resources, adaptation to new technologies, and maintaining life. Drivers of the new space economy. Satellite launch. The focus of the satellite launch companies is on research and development of technology and infrastructure that will enable them to send spacecraft to space for various purposes. Another driver is the satellite internet. Satellite internet companies focus is on improving connectivity through satellites. The picture here shows launching of space S Crew Dragon from Cape Canaveral, Florida, atop a Falcon 9 rocket on March 2, 2019. This is the first commercial spaceship designed for humans ever to live at. Another driver of the new space economy is the lunar landing. The focus of the companies into lunar landing is on missions to the Earth's moon, 
building of infrastructures and products for Atmo missions. Another driver is Art Observation. Art Observation companies develop imaging, tracking, and analytic technologies for the monitoring of weather, climate, maritime data, and GPS technology. The picture here shows Blue Moon. The lander designed by Blue Origin to vary supplies and eventual humans to the loaded service. Acero mining is another driver of the new space economy. The focus of the companies into acero mining is to develop technologies that will aid extraction of water, rare minerals, and metals from asteroids. Space debris is another driver. Space debris removal companies are into tracking and analysis of the human made objects orbiting in the atmosphere. Debris is monitored so as to prevent collision with satellites and spacecraft or from falling to the Earth. This picture shows a Japanese spacecraft, Ayabuzu 2, landed on an asteroid after blasting it with a bullet in order to collect samples of subsurface rock. Space tourism is another point of focus and a main driver for the new space economy. The focus of the space tourism companies such as Fajin Galactic and Blue Origin is to develop access to space for private citizens, space explorers and space adventure programs. Space research is another driver. The people into space research perform research exploration and education about space and space technology. The picture here shows Fajin Galactic VSS Unity designed for space tourism by Fajin Galactic. Manufacturing is another driver. The focus of the company into manufacturing is to design and develop spacecraft, hardware, propulsion systems, and engines. They form large sub segment of the global space economy. Deep space exploration. The companies into deep space exploration develop high level missions for the transportation of women and cargoes beyond the Earth's atmosphere to the moon, to the Mars and beyond. The picture here shows NASA's deep space atomic clock project. The super accurate timekeeping technology could one day serve as a kind of GPS in deep space. Now, growth of global space economy. Here, we have the major sectors dominating the global space economy. Products and services. This sector drives the majority of commercial activity in the space industry. These products and services meet specific needs in telecommunications, location-based services, and monitoring and observation. Another major sector is the infrastructure sector. Production of space vehicles such as rockets and rovers, ground and space stations, and receivers such as satellites, terminals for internet, and TV are also booming. As the global population grows, our need to stay connected to each other evolves. Another major sector dominating the global space economy is also government sector. Most modern government space agencies are actively monitoring and tracking space to offer better resources and services for their citizens, including geopolitical monitoring and missile tracking. Global Space Industry Morgan Stanley estimated that the global space industry could generate revenue of more than $1 trillion or more by the year 2040, up from $350 billion that is estimated to be currently. It was forecasted that the most significant short and medium term opportunities may come from satellite broadband internet access. The picture here shows the projected growth of space economy. Now, 
Here we have 2019 state of the satellite industry and revenues. The global space economy in 2019 was estimated to be about $366 billion. And it is divided as follows. This section here is for satellite services, which was estimated to have brought in a revenue of about $123 billion. And the revenue are from the following telecommunications, remote sensing, science, and national security. Revenue for telecommunications came from television, telephone, broadband, aviation, maritime, road, and rail. For the remote sensing, the revenue came from agriculture, chain detection, disaster mitigation, meteorology, and resources. And for the science, the revenue came from art science and space science. The section B of the global space economy came from grand equipment, and it was estimated to be about $130.3 billion. And the revenue came from network equipment and consumer equipment. The network equipment from which this revenue came from are gateways, visits, network operation centers, satellite news gathering equipment. And for the consumer equipment, we have the satellite TV, radio, and broadcast equipment, global navigation satellite systems for the section c we have the satellite manufacturing and the uh the revenue from this is estimated to be 12.5 billion dollars for the year 2019. section d we have the launch industry which garnered about 4.9 billion dollars in revenue and lastly, for the section E, which is a non-satellite industry, the revenue was estimated to be $95 billion. And this came from government space budgets and commercial human space flight. The sections A, B, C, and D, they encompass the satellite industry, which reckon about 74% of space economy. And section E, is the non-satellite industry portion. 2019 state of the satellite industry and revenues. 74% of space industry revenues worldwide came from the satellite industry. Grand equipment accounts for nearly half of that amount, about $130.3 billion. Technology innovations in visits and gateways drove faster trial speeds and direct capacity, enabling new service capabilities and contributing to a 19% growth in revenue for the broadband industry. This picture shows the technology that we sent to space, the reusable rockets for cheaper travel and production, advanced satellites, lower cost, higher bandwidth, greater global coverage. For changing life on Earth, in turn, this first innovation on Earth and boost our space activity. 2020 Global Space Economy The Space Report 2021 Second Quarter In 2020, the global space economy rose to about $447 billion, which was an increase of about 4.4 percent from a refined 2019 total of 4.8 billion dollars and this fact was given by space foundation company comparison to a decade ago the 447 billion dollar space economy is 55 percent higher than a decade ago and part of a five-year trend of uninterrupted growth the picture here show the space economy scorecard, the annual metrics as of February 1st, 2021. The number of nations operating in space, 85. The size of the global space economy as of 2019, 
The adjusted price was $423.8 billion. The commercial space revenue, 2019, $336.89 billion. The global government space program spending, 2019, about $86.9 billion. The U.S. economic impact of GS, GPS since 1984 was estimated to be about $1.4 trillion. The number of payloads in orbit as of 2020 was estimated to be 6,589. And the number of global launch attempts by year 2020 was 114. And the notable numbers are 86,000 global space pistons end between 1996 to 2015. 9.3 million US STEM employment 2019 and 43 global space ports. 18 of them are in development. The commercial space growth. Commercial space activity grew about 6.6% to nearly $357 billion in 2020, still representing close to 80% of the total space economy. Government spending on space. Global government space spending fell by 1.2% in 2020 to $90.2 billion from a refined 2019 peak of $91.4 billion. Nearly 58% of this total was allocated to space activities by the United States. The top three investors in year 2020. Globally, the top three investors in the global space economy remained in 2020 are United States, China, and European Space Agency. Collectively, these three entities constituted more than 81% of government space spending in 2020. These are from Space Foundation. The picture here shows the universe. Future of Space Economy The potential areas of future advancement are as follows. Space services, assembly and manufacturing, proportion and energy systems, space construction and robotics, agriculture in space, exploration of new ways to make things smaller and lighter, space services assembling and manufacturing. Example of this is found in OSM-1, an orbit servicing, assembling and manufacturing. A robotic spacecraft equipped with the tools, technologies and techniques needed to extend satellite lifespans even if they were not designed to be serviced on orbit, is the OSM-1. During its mission, the OSM-1 servicer will render for, with, grasp, refuel, and relocate a government-owned satellite to, to extend its life. This picture shows artist concept of OSM-1. OSAM-1 capabilities can give satellite operators new ways to manage their fleets more efficiently and derive more value from their initial investment. These capabilities could even help mitigate the looming problem of orbital debris. This picture shows OSAM-1 satellite. Successful completion of this mission would demonstrate that servicing technologies are ready for incorporation into other nursing missions, including exploration and science ventures. This picture shows artist concept of OSM-1. Servicing technologies. The servicing technologies are as follows. Autonomous real-time navigation system, sensors, algorithms, and the processor joint forces align OSM-1 to render for safely with its client. Another servicing technology is servicing a few needs. In addition to ingesting and crunching sector data, these elements control someone's renders for a robotic task. The picture here shows various servicing technologies. Another one is the Desterous Robotic Arms. Two nimble maneuverable arms, presently 
execute servicing assignments. So software also included. Advanced tool driver and tools, sophisticated multifunction tools are manufactured to execute each servicing task. Propellant transfer system. This system delivers measured amounts of fuel to the client at the right temperature, pressure, and rate. This picture shows an artist's impression of SSL restored air spacecraft approaching a satellite for refueling. Another feature of the space economy is the propulsion and energy systems. NASA is supporting advances in electric propulsion systems through SBIR grants. Why these are difficult to make, to scale on art and transport, in space production may be actually feasible. Specifically, Hall effect thrusters created in space could offer much greater efficiency and power with larger size. Other new space developments in this area have to do with stored energy and battery innovations. This picture shows an electrically powered spacecraft propulsion system which uses electrical energy to change the velocity of a spacecraft. Space construction and robotics is another area of feature of the space economy. The future of the space economy will require many items to be created in space rather than being shuttled from Earth. One such item involves a space launch pad, which NASA hopes to have on the moon. Several companies, such as Exploration Architecture, are pursuing construction systems designed to create bricks for this purpose. Using lunar dust as a resource, this company hopes to make moon bricks known as Rigolith Brick. The picture is, here shows ISRU-based robotic construction technologies for lunar and Martian infrastructure. Agriculture in space. Being able to produce foodstuffs in space eliminates cargo while also inviting new production opportunities. One company interested in this is Bloomfield Robotics which plans to advance its controlled environment agriculture. Experimenting with microgravity environments, the company is combining deep learning systems with multispectral plant imaging. Ultimately, they hope to scale agricultural production as part of the new space developments. This picture shows a nasa designed inflatable greenhouse for cultivating green things on the red planet. Exploration of new ways to make things smaller and lighter is another feature of the space economy. The future of space economy is also dependent on constantly exploring new ways to make things smaller and lighter. IntelliSense company is looking to use neuromorphic computing to simplify and shrink radio stacks in this regard. The picture here shows Kenneth Arms to supporting astronauts working in space and services instruments and other payloads which are attached to the International Space Station. For more information, contact Astronaut for Export. You've been watching the New Space Economy. Thank you.